Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that an online shop then sells a computer game at an average rate of one per day. And in an attempt to increase sales of the computer game, the price is reduced for six months. A random sample of 28 days is taken from these six months. And in the sample of 28 days, 36 computer games are sold. Using a suitable approximation and a 5% level of significance, test whether or not the average rate of sales per day has increased during these six months. State your hypothesis clearly. And this is for seven marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, first of all, what I want to do is set up our random variable, okay? I'm gonna call it X, so I'm just going to say here, let X be the random variable. I have RV for short, the random variable. And in this example, it'll be the number of sales. Okay, number of sales. Now X will follow a Poisson distribution. So I'm just going to say here where X is distributed as a Poisson distribution with a mean of lambda. Now we've got to state our hypothesis clearly here. And so what I'm going to have for my null hypothesis as if nothing has changed, we're going to have that the mean, because it's one per day, we're looking at 28 days, we'd expect to have a mean number of sales of 28. So the null hypothesis, lambda, is going to be equal to 28. But we're told that 36 computer games are sold. And because this is more than our mean, then we're wanting to test to see whether or not the number of cells has increased. In other words, the alternative hypothesis then is that the mean has increased. So it's greater than 28. So we've stated our hypothesis clearly here. And we're testing at the 5% level. So I'm going to put alpha equals 5% here. And we've also got an observed value which is 36, which we'll be testing with. Now when I'm doing hypothesis testing, if you watched my earlier videos, quite often you'll see that I like drawing a kind of number line here. And we've got a mean of 28. If the null hypothesis was true, then I would be expecting generally 28 sales. I'm not gonna get exactly 28 sales, every um, month but let's just suppose that it's going to vary it's going to vary somewhere around those 28. we've got 36 sales and the question is is that 36 a value which is just generally expected or is it in what we call the rejection region where I would reject the null hypothesis, okay? So I'm just gonna write that in there. And there's two ways that we can approach this type of problem. And that is that we can either work out what the probability is of getting more than 36, and if that is less than 5%, then we would reject the null hypothesis. The other way is to work out what the critical value would be. Where would be the number, what would be the number of sales if we had to reject HO? Now in this video, I'm just going to look at the method where we reject the null hypothesis if the probability of X being greater than or equal to 36, given that the null hypothesis is true, turns out to be less than 0.05. In 
The accompanying video with this will do the method where we look at the critical value. So we need to work out then what the probability is, we'll just put it here, the probability of x being greater than or equal to 36. Now the probability of x being greater than or equal to 36 would be the same as working out 1 minus the probability x being less than or equal to 35. But for a Poisson distribution like this, it's going to be a bit awkward because of the huge number here. And that's why we're being asked to use a suitable approximation. Now, you should be familiar with this fact. If not, you can check it out on my website. And that is that since the mean, lambda, is a big number, and I'm going to say greater than 20, this value here does vary from one textbook to the other. I've seen it go down to 15 before. But generally, we'll say greater than 20. Then the random variable x, a discrete random variable, following a Poisson distribution, can be approximated to another random variable, which I'll call y, say, which follows a normal distribution. And if this is the case, the mean is always the mean, lambda, that we're using, and the variance is also lambda. So for us, if the null hypothesis is true, I'll just say under the null hypothesis, then we see that y will follow a normal distribution with a mean of 28, and the variance would be 28. So just bordering this off here, what have we got? Well, the probability of x being greater than or equal to 36, when we approximate it to the random variable y, which is now following a normal distribution, we've got to be very careful because we've got to introduce a continuity correction. We have to say that y is greater than 35.5. If you're not familiar with continuity corrections, do check it out on my website. But very briefly, what we've got here is that we're taking a discrete random variable 36 and we're trying to join this up, the gaps that exist between say 35, 36, 37 with a box here of unit width. And we're looking for the probability of being more than 36, so we want to be to the right of 36, but yet it's got to include 36. So we're looking for an area which represents the probability. It's got to include the 36, so we come right up to this edge here, which is at 35.5. So this is our continuity correction. And so when it comes to working with normal distributions, we've got our normal distribution for the random variable y. We'll just sketch that in here. OK, not the greatest sketch. We've got a mean then under the null hypothesis of 28. We're looking for finding a value now greater than 35.5. So if we just mark that in, there, we're looking for the area to the right of that value being 35.5. And so we need to work out what the standardized z value would be that would correspond with that. Okay, And uh, once we've got that z value that corresponds with that, we get that probability as given by that area there. So this is going to be then roughly the same then as working out the probability that our standardized variable z is greater than. And if we use the formula for connecting z to uh, observed value up here, it's going to be the observed value, which is 35.5, minus the mean, which is 28. And we divide this by the standard deviation. And we've got the variance is 28, so the standard deviation would be the square root of 28. And if you work this out, you find that it comes to the probability of z being greater than 
0.173 and so on. And if you work this out either using a calculator or tables you should find that you get 0.0781 and so on. And this value here is greater than 5%, 5% being 0.05. So what does that mean? It means that it's not significant. We're going to have to accept the null hypothesis in other words. And I've got that here that it's not significant. We accept the null hypothesis and there is evidence to suggest that the rate of increase of sales then has not increased.